Sophia, welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest partners with angels, angels of fire, and says you should too. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. I, I'm here with Dr. Candace smith -Hamid. And you may wonder why I'm doing something different than I've ever done before. My hand is behind my back. It's because Dr. Candace is a seer. And as a seer, she said, there is a big angel behind me. And if I would put my hand behind my back, I would feel the angel's presence. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the same glory that is on that angel is being transferred to me right now. I would like you to travel with me, Dr. <laughs> Candace, and just tell me when I should put my hand behind my back. I'd be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Candace, how important is it for all, all believers to partner with the angels. Is that all believers or just the ones that are serious like you? No, all believers. See, it doesn't matter whether we can see in the spirit a big 12-foot angel. The fact of the matter is the Word of God says that He sent His angels flames of fire. And we know that in the Hebrew and in the Greek, the word malak and agalos are words that tell us they're messengers, they're servants, they're waiters, they're deputies. So they're waiters that are waiting for us who are the royal citizens of the kingdom of heaven to give them an order from the Word of God. And it's so important to understand how to cooperate with the angels you, you teach in your book because the harvest is upon us. That's right. Yes. And let me tell you what the Lord showed me, said. He wants us, we're human beings, we're a type of creature, right, mm -hmm. who, who has inherited salvation. But the angels don't need salvation, okay? Yet they are created beings to come alongside those who have in inherited salvation. We know the power of the resurrection. So they are to be submissive to those who are human beings that understand the power of the resurrection in order to direct them to join in with kingdom work. What the Lord has said he wants to see happen with revival, end time revival, the release of glory, the harvest of souls. He wants us now to partner with them and be active. It is no more that we just go forth kind of wondering, are angels really there to help us? But we now make some active choices and understand in the word that we're called to partner with them. Now, does everyone, I've heard the term guardian angel, does everyone have a guardian angel? Yes, everyone has a guardian angel, and they have been assigned that angel at conception. So all the times I've had close calls in driving my car. Yes. Thank you, guardian angel. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yes. Uh, what are the uh, different functions of angels? Well, um, they, they're, they're healing angels. Uh, they're angels that bring provision directly you know, you, from heaven. You said to me before, when we were just before we started that there'll be a lot of healing. So are there healing angels here? Yes, there are healing angels here. You mean there's all more angels than in these? Oh, areas? my gosh, yeah. They're all here in this area. There are angels of fire that have brought healing properties directly from the throne of God to heal those not only in the studio audience, but also you right there at home so that you are able to have whatever it, the deficiency is in your body, whatever is broken and missing, they have come from the throne of God on assignment to bring us healing in that area. But you say all angels are angels of fire. Why? Yes, including our guardian angels, because the throne of God is a throne of fire. And they all have to be able to get near the throne of God. We have our seraphim angels, our cherubim angels, and they surround the throne. So they all have to have the fire properties within them. All right, And we know this from Isaiah chapter 6, because when the Lord uh, came to Isaiah, he, the seraphim angels came and brought a coal 
that came to purify the lips of Isaiah, straight from the throne of God. So around the throne is fire and fire properties that we actually need in our bodies to be healthy. Well, you've had a lot of encounters with angels. Yes. Tell me about that eight foot angel. Yes, Yared the giant killer. Okay. His name, you knew his name? No, his name. Um, he, I, I encountered. And Yara, does that mean giant killer? Yep. Well, actually, Yah stands for God. Yahweh. Okay. Red is the Hebrew word Admone, which is broken down to reddish. Okay. Reddish. Okay. And who do we know had a reddish appearance but David? And what did David do? He killed the giant. Hmm. In order for us to see greater healings and miracles, the Lord will send us angels on assignment that will come and they will perform specific duties so that they're in, they're in agreement with us. They're there to perform the duties that are necessary so that God's people can be healed, saved, and delivered. So we have to just believe that they're with us as opposed to, God, send an angel. All we have to do is cooperate with them. That's exactly right. And it's by faith, Sid. This is why it's for everyone. And of course, we're not making this up. It's in the Word of God specifically that He sent these angels as messengers to be His agents along with us, partnering to see the end time harvest, the end time revival, the glory being released. So now's the time, as you and I both know, now's the time in the earth for this. So when this eight-foot angel showed up, what happened? Well, he showed up in my dream, okay? I was, and I get a lot of dreams and visions from the Lord, but, but nonetheless, whether they're right in front of me, which I can see these here, or whether or not they're in my dreams, I, I, I see all kinds of things in my dreams that the Lord is saying, this is what I have assigned you or what I, where I want you to go, what I want you to do. So I had a dream, and Yah Red was in my dream, and he was about eight feet tall. He had red hair. And he asked me to come over to him. This is in the dream. It was so powerful, Sid. I walked over to him. He was actually kind of dressed. I, he was dressed in human form. He didn't have angel, angel wings, okay? He was human form. But as he asked me to come near him in the dream, he began to whisper in my ear. And the minute I got near him, I felt this intense presence of the Lord. It was so strong. And then directly after that time um, is when the Lord spoke to me his name, Yah read, and, he, and the Lord told me, you have seen him because I'm sending him with you to go to England, Ireland, and France, where you're going to be on your next ministry assignment. When he showed up, at your ministry assignment, what happened? Oh, it was powerful. Because when a giant killer comes in, that means every demonic force can, that, that has raised itself as a giant up against the Word of God must back off. It's interesting. Down. You say up against the Word of God. Yes. That's the key. That's exactly right. And and so if we don't speak the Word of God, he has nothing to work with. That's what you mean by cooperating with cooperating. the Cooperating. You're absolutely right. Because, Sid, I've had multiple encounters with the Lord where the Lord has showed me specifically where I have gone off to do things and angels have been with me, but I have not uh, said, done, or called on them to assist in the process. It didn't mean that the outcome didn't take place, but it just meant that I had extra forces with me that I did not put to use. See, they will stand back and wait for us to speak the word and guide and direct so that we can begin to really partner, okay? So God had given me the authority to step in, but he's given them the authority to follow the word on the inside of me. So I had to have the delegated authority from God, exousia power, to step into dunamis, miracle working power, and begin to watch these angels do what only God had assigned them to do. So it's a strategic partnership, strategic. and most believers I said that, that, mm -hmm. that uh, when we talked about your new book, mm -hmm. their angels are unemployed because they're not speaking the words of God. That's right. That's right. Actually, that word voice in the Hebrew, and you see it all, all along in, in the Hebrew, especially I'll bring up two um, scriptures. Um, uh, Psalm 29, 7 says, the voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. And we're talking here about angels that are flames of fire. That word voice is the word coal, okay? Coal actually means spark, thunder, 
flame. When we speak the word of God, a spark of flame starts and the angels of fire begin to come in and join with the spark from heaven because it's his voice. They hear his voice. Remember, his spirit's in us, though it's us speaking, it's his voice speaking. It starts the flame of fire and they begin to come in line with that flame and they begin to start to move. The Word of God, according to the Word of God, is Jesus. Yes. So Jesus is coming on the scene, and the angels are following his instructions, which are written in the Word of God, which is Jesus. Amen. You know, it's so simple, you need help to get confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Um, let's take you back to one of your first experiences ministering with angels. Yes. Tell me about that. It was in France. I went to France to minister there, and I was in a meeting, and the Lord began to shift the meeting. I mean, I was there, I was uh, bringing a prophetic word, uh, talking about the Hebrew calendar, other things, and the Lord just began to start shifting things, and He said, you know, my healing presence is here, and I want you to begin to usher in my presence, but the angels of fire are here, and I want the people to experience them. So I was like, okay, Lord. Of course, I knew about the angels of fire, but he wanted the people to experience them. What does that mean? How do you experience? Yeah, well, listen, fire? I'm excited because the studio audience and the people watching online are going to get a chance to experience today. Sounds good to me. Amen. <laughs> So uh, I began, the Lord um, asked me to call forth anyone who needed healing. So I had them come forth and I just began to speak healing over them. There was, lay, there was laying on of hands in this uh, particular meeting. And then the Lord said, now the fire angels are here and there's people out there that, have not, that want to receive an impartation for healing. He goes, so call them to stand up and come to the front. And so I did that. And so, he, and then he said, let the angels of fire touch them their hands will go on fire, as will their feet in some occasion, but their hands will go on fire. I want them to lay hands then on the next group that you're going to call forth for healing. So sure enough, the angels of fire came, began to start touching people in different areas for healing, but also their hands, and a whole line of people received a healing anointing, and then they laid hands on the next group that had not yet received anything, who then began to start. That to fire see. was so strong, it was, so it was strong. transferable. It was transferable, yes. And I can see, and, and I, I teach this, this in the book, and this is for anyone, when you just know and understand, there are different colors for different fire angels, and this also in the Word of God, okay? And so they have different colors and they have different healing properties with their colors. So blue ones are seraph angels, okay? They bring copper. That word seraph in the Hebrew is copper, serpent actually. So they'll bring copper properties from the throne of God. When our body is deficient in copper, we'll take vitamins. Right. But you can ask the Lord to send you a fire angel, a blue one, and they will come and pull the impurities out of your body and your, your body will go on fire. And with that, you will then begin to be deposited with sulfate from heaven around the throne of God. And it's, it's actually copper sulfate. There are calcium angels that are orange, yellow ones that bring sodium, red ones that bring strontium and lithium. Lithium is a component that we need in our brain. Many people who have mental disorders suffer from mm. lithium disorders. So of course, calcium, we know the importance of that for bones and sodium to regulate our liver, our kidneys, kidneys, um, also the pH balance in our body. And I list all of this in the book in healing charts. I mean, I mean, I'll tell you, you deal with things I've never seen before, <laughs> but then you deal with things from another kingdom. Yes. And your job is to bring them into, into our kingdom right yeah. now. Yeah. When we come back, I'm going to have Dr. Candace pray for you to partner with angels of fire. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. 
Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. We now return to It's Supernatural. And we are in such presence of the fire angels right now. Interesting, you're talking of it of fire angels, and they're all over this auditorium. Amen, they are. You, you were talking about functions of angels. Tell us some more functions of angels. Yes, they'll bring purification, cleansing, healing, provision. They, there, there are so many different things that the angels do. And, and actually, getting into the Word of God, you can see how uh, they also ushered in um, guardian, they were guardian angels, as in they had to guard specific things. We know they guarded the Ark of the Covenant, you know, and, and we also know that they are around the throne of God, so they're guarding things there as well. And so we just need to tap into, and I explain that in my book, all of their different functions, what they do, and how can we call on That's them. That's what you mean by cooperating. That's exactly right. So, so it's a strategic partnership, like you said. And, and especially if you understand the different functions of the fire angels, since all angels have elements of fire with them. That's why we call them fire angels. That's why Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7 says that they are servants who are flames of fire. That's why the word says that, that the voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire is because they respond to his voice. And so when you learn these things, you will be able to partner with angels in confidence. That's what, what the Lord wanted from this book, was that his people would become confident even in what they couldn't see with the natural eye, because you know everyone wants to see the big angel in front of them. But you have to know in the spirit that what the Lord's word is, is life. Hey, and it's we're life. better off than you. <laughs> More blessed are those that believe. Yeah, that's right. Than who have seen. Those that have to believe to see the angels that's right. are actually in a more blessed position. The ones that see, they're helping us realize how blessed we are. Amen. Amen, that's right. And when I go around and I teach this, I have seen, uh, we've seen miraculous things. We have lots of testimonies that, no, you know. Tell me a few minutes. Yeah. Few well, there's one where I went to teach a leadership team in Oklahoma, and I began to share with them the different colors of the angels and what they did. Well, the associate pastor and his wife were sitting in the front row, and they began to take notes fervently, you know, as to what I was saying, but they couldn't get down everything. They didn't know what color did what. Well, the pastor's wife, uh, the pastor's uh, father was in the hospital and he was on a, uh, a carbon dioxide mask and he was not healthy at all. He was in ICU. And they took these little bits that I shared with them and after they left the meeting that night, they called, uh, well, they, they called on the Lord and they prayed and they dispatched all the angels with all the different colors. They said, we don't know really what Dr. Candace said about the colors, but we're gonna send the blue, orange, yellow. We're gonna send them to our father's room, and we just believe. And the, and the wife told me specifically, she gave this as a testimony to the congregation the next day when I was ministering. She said, all I grasped from what you were saying is that I carried the voice of the Lord, she said. And that gave me the confidence to know that I had the power to dispatch these angels, not because it was my voice, but because it was God's will that my father-in-law be healed and that I could say and that they would go. And so she was falling in line with that Hebrew word coal. She was saying, it's God's voice in the inside of me. And I'm gonna ask the Lord to send these angels, but I'm gonna dispatch them right now. Well, the next morning we got the testimony that um, they called, the father-in-law called uh, his daughter-in-law first thing in the morning and said, oh my God, I've been healed and I am coming out of ICU. And someone came in in the middle of the night and took off my mask. And he says, I feel amazing. What happened? Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, 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 let, you teach on so many ways to partner with angels, but one of the keys 
is spending time in God's presence. Yes. Comment on that. Yes, you need to. Because listen, when you spend time in the presence of the Lord, the Lord will increase your faith. When you spend time in His Word and in His presence, you begin to manifest who Jesus is and you begin to walk in that level of delegated authority that he's, you, be, you feel like a royal citizen of heaven, like we should feel all the time. Royal citizens would know that they could dispatch their servants to go and do anything and those servants would accomplish the task that was spoken by the master. The Lord expects that of us, right? If he ministers a word to us, he expects us to be his servants and to go forth. We should expect the same of angels. I'm going to demonstrate this right now. The Word of God says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart He rose from the dead, you shall be saved, delivered, healed. You shall have peace beyond human understanding. Repeat this prayer out loud. Dear God, please forgive me for my sins, for they are many. I believe your blood washes away my sins, and I am clean. And now that I am clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me and be my Lord. Amen. Release the healings now. Ooh, hallelujah. Okay, for those of you who are in the studio audience and watching at home, I want you to just lift up your hands right now, all right? Father, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you that the angels are fire in this house right now, Lord. You know those who are having physical ailments in their body, Lord, right now, Father. I thank you that you've already dispatched the angels here, Lord, and I thank you, Father, that they will begin to actively start working. I see them working on backs. I see lower backs right now being healed. Pressure off your back in Jesus' name. Back of your neck right now in Jesus' name. I see someone with liver disorders. Father, I thank you for the, for the yellow fire angels coming right now now to heal, heal liver, kidneys, pancreas right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, that there's some in the house that want to receive healing gifts. Lord, I thank you right now, Father, for fire on your hands in the name of Jesus. Those receive fire right now, those are the angels of fire touching you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, they're receiving an impartation for healing right now. I thank you that you are sent ones and God's going to send you forth as royal citizens of the kingdom of heaven to go and do what God has called you to do, but the angels will be with you, new angels of assignment. The fire angels go with you and they will respond to the voice of the Lord on the inside of you. Father, I thank you. I see some people's feet on fire right now too. Some of your feet's on fire, new destiny, new hope, new future. That's why your feet's on fire right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe too, when you leave the studio audience or when you leave hearing this message on the line, you are going to begin to feel a rapid change in your body, any, any area. And listen, if I didn't not call it out, you call it out yourself. We dispatch the red fire angels for mental health disorders, the orange for calcium, the yellow for sodium, and the blue ones for copper, for impurities in the body come out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God is telling me Ooh. that deaf spirits Ooh. are leaving in Jesus' name. Here, here. <laughs> Life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need, you commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe ten, you commute back home, you cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. You wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. There's a path that was created for you, which you alone can take. Day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? 
We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Hammond. Did you know that the world has entered a new era, the last of the last days? Now, you may be asking, what is my role in this final season? Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth and find out the answer. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits. Now you can be mentored in operating in the miraculous and also receive your own supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. Whatever you're facing, family problems, financial worries, sickness, depression, this network will make a difference in your life. Whenever, wherever. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough. Download the free ISN app today. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.